He is the chair of Monarchy New Zealand. Dr. Sean Palmer joins us. Sean, hello to you, sir. Hello. Um, lovely to see you again. I haven't seen you in probably close to a decade uh, when we talked about all sorts of royal things and various media outlets. So I'm very grateful you took my call today and happy to jump in and have a chat about the events of the last three or four days. Well, thank you. I don't think either of us is aged today in a day. <laughs> so, hey, um, I, I noticed, that, and here's Monarchy New Zealand, here's the website, monarchy.org.nz, uh, obviously with a, a big banner on the moment uh, announcing the uh, the sad news of the Queen passing away. Um, I actually did see a headline, I think, on Thursday night talking about the Queen's health. Mm. Um it might have been Wednesday night, it might have been Thursday night, but the next thing I noticed, it was a headline, the Queen had passed away. Was this was this a bit of a build-up for, for several days and weeks? or Because that feels very quick to me, that there was an announcement, and then the next thing I knew she had passed. Yeah, I, I saw that headline as well. I think it was Thursday night, and my immediate reaction was, skepticism towards the media um, <laughs> because you know the, the media claim that the sky is falling when it comes to the queen's health all the time right. and um uh i just i sort of brushed that off uh, in hindsight far too easily uh the the article did mention that uh the uh charles camilla william and catherine were headed up to where the queen was and that maybe should have tipped us off that this was more than than the usual right. uh, health care. Uh, but it was a very short uh, period of time. You know, uh, she had appeared with Prime Minister Truss in a photo just a, a day or two before that. Um, and, you know, people said, well, you know, she's 96 years old. We don't expect her to look like a, a spring chicken, but um, she seemed well enough. And it, it shows you how fast these things can change. And I mean, I, I'm, I, I want to, don't be more, but this is a natural question, but do we have a, an announcement of the cause of death? I haven't actually heard anything on that. That's, that's a really interesting point. Um, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what the process would be for that. Uh, whether one would need a coroner's report in order to, to make that distinct, you know, um, that decision or not. Um, obviously she is, she has been transported uh, to Hollywood Palace now. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure if there's been any further examination. I guess that just means um, natural causes, 96, sort of to be expected. I, I think so. I mean, uh, admittedly, you know, on Friday, a lot of people asked me, were you shocked by this? And I said, well, when you're dealing with someone who's 96, mm. you know that the inevitable is not terribly far away. But nevertheless, it is a shock on the day that it happens. Yeah. Because um, been queen since, what is it, 53? 52, 53? 70 years, eh? Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so 52. Um, so for most of us, most people in the country have never experienced anything other, other than Queen Elizabeth. I mean, exactly. obviously, if you were uh, if you were born prior to that, so if you were born prior to 1953, and there are many New Zealanders who are, but certainly not the majority, you've experienced something else. It's very, very strange situation to start thinking about using the word king. It's a very strange situation to start thinking about, you know, God save the king being a national anthem. Um, but you're kind of, you are the chair of Monarchy New Zealand. What about personally for you? How did it hit you over the weekend? How were you feeling on Friday? Uh, well, again, that shock was, was quite palpable. Um, my phone, unfortunately, had been on Do Not Disturb until 6 a.m. So I woke up to a lot of messages and missed calls as the media were trying to reach out to me. And um, it uh, there, there was a little bit of disbelief. I thought I really better... So how, did you find, so how did you find out? Yeah, how did you actually find out that it had happened? Oh, uh, a number of, of uh, colleagues had, right. uh, had messaged me. And um, unfortunately, they just it didn't uh, it didn't make a beat when it came in. So, um, yeah, but uh, but in terms of of that Friday, uh, yeah, I, I must say I was so busy uh, working with the media, trying to get the facts about the monarchy out there, talk about the significance of, of the crown and of the queen's life and, and role that I really didn't have much time to think about it from my own perspective. Right. Uh, at the time. Um, and just over the last few days, as I've had a bit more time to consider it, um, 
it's been a slow process. You know, there's a lot of disbelief. And I think, um, I think a lot of people around the world are feeling that, that uh, this era has come to an end yeah. and it happened very quickly. And it's, it's almost hard to believe, as you say, 70 years, yeah. you know, if, if, if you're a 70 year old individual, this is still your entire lifespan. I, um, I, I, and it's interesting how these people are a part of our psyche and a part of our makeup. And for you in particular, I can, I can relate to maybe how you're feeling a bit or how you were feeling when you heard it. Um, I grew up Catholic, um, but sort of left all that when I was 16, when I left school, I sort of, uh, left everything else, you know? Mm. Um, but I, when Pope John Paul II died, I mean, I can remember where I was living because I can remember watching the funeral on the TV. So I mm -hmm. guess that was, I was probably mid thirties, maybe, maybe not 40, mid thirties, maybe in that, I could look right. it up if I wanted to, but yeah, around that. And I burst into tears watching his funeral. Mm. And it's not that that necessarily had anything to do with my, my beliefs or a practice that I held on to with, with anything. I hadn't been involved with that organization since I was 16, but it was ingrained always yeah. there this this figure who had always been there who obviously i was heavily influenced by their uh i guess teachings or beliefs or whatever or organization for you know my formative years and 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 with i mean different for you because you're actually working in this world but but these figures get into our lives and they mm -hmm. impact us and um yeah i i even heard and i know some people are teasing old mike hosking for his reaction talking to his missus on radio when he burst into tears but they get in they get in and they're there and they're part of everything we know and understand and they're a part of the norm of the world and so when they're not there the norm of the world has changed absolutely look there was there was a question that was presented to me on friday they said um could you pick a few iconic moments from her life that you'll always remember and um, <clears throat> the challenge to me, I said to them, was that it's not so much the specific moments as that constant background presence mm. that, was, that was always there. And, um, and I, I fully sympathize with, with what you're saying in terms of um, it's very easy for us to, to feel disengaged from, from the monarchy and, and members of the royal family who are on the other side of the world. Uh, but it is deeply woven into the, the fabric of the country. And, uh, you know, a classic example I give is to say that there are more than 100 million portraits of Queen Elizabeth wow. in New Zealand. And in New Zealand? That, in New hang, on, Zealand hang, on, hang on, hang on. You said 100 million? 100 million portraits. And everyone says, now that can't possibly be true. Oh, uh, are you so, talking money? Exactly. Ah, uh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Exactly. No, no, so I gotcha. Oh, you didn't catch me out there, Sean. I got you in the end. I got you in the you end. You got you got there in the end. But you see, that's the key: is that it is so present, you yeah. know, to something that we might use on a daily basis, um, and yet we don't even think about it. Did was there any conversation? Obviously, uh, not from your perspective, but when you and I last talked and last did something in broadcasting it was kate and wills you know and the world was swooning over kate and wills and there was this there was this push by some there was the kind of monarchist republican conversation and there was a push by some within the monarchist world that um you know if we were to stay maybe you know charles is getting a bit old maybe we should leapfrog him and maybe we should go straight to william i'm sort of surprised that that i mean i i, I know that people will say it's disrespectful to have the republican conversation now Personally, I think it's a good time. We're not doing it, obviously, at the moment, but it's a good time to have it at the, the transitional time. Um, but I'm surprised there's been no real conversation around the process of, you know, does everyone want Charles? Because I remember you telling me, Sean, that if, and I think you talked, I actually think you mentioned Canada and specifically, like if Canada wanted William as their king, they could do that. So there could be different kings for different countries should they want to. Um, yeah. But that conversation doesn't seem to have i mean i'm not saying it would come from the from the royals but that doesn't seem to have happened at all it's just moved so quickly it's king charles and conversation over well that's right in fact the um the legislation that determines who's next you know it it, it was never up to charles or up to the queen elizabeth as to who would be the successor mm -hmm. it was all laid out in legislation in each of these individual countries new zealand australia canada the uk they've all got legislation that did determines this and it's all essentially word for word identical so that it ensures that it's the same person um 
the last time that legislation was changed was was a short time after the the royal wedding there it must have been 2012 2013 when prince george was on the way because they said you know what as the rules stand now the male an yeah. Elder, yeah an elder yeah. sister loses out to a younger brother and they said we yeah. need to make this gender balanced so a concerted effort was made to change it and say eldest child regardless of sex and there was a moment where we made a change um and there hasn't been a change in the process since then so mm. it was always going to be uh king charles the third as as next and we know it will be william the fifth after that and then probably george the seventh how do you feel uh, about king charles like i mean as a as a as the monarch how does that yeah. make you feel as him, him as a person being the the leader of the commonwealth how does how do you feel mm. about that well, I must I must start by saying it still takes a lot of getting used to to say that thing to, 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 to say that word. Up. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a very peculiar experience. King's and birthday I, weekend, you know. Yes. Oh, absolutely. You know, and uh, and I wasn't there for the seventy years of the Queen's reign. Uh, I, I was I was only there for you know about forty of it, and <laughs> um, uh, and still that's a huge change to to me. Um, in terms of of him personally, I think ultimately he's he's going to do a very good job. I think he's going to do a very different job. I think his style will be quite different from his mother's style. Um, and I think that's reasonable. We should expect that incumbents in an office will bring a different uh, flavor to that office. Yeah. Um, but I think in the end, we will look back at, at Charles's reign and say, he did a good job. It was a much shorter reign than his mother's, just by necessity. Yeah. But he he did what needed to be done, and you know I think there's a few elements of that that we've already started to see. For example, his um, his speech following his mother's passing, where he addressed uh, the Commonwealth, and um, you know people could see genuine emotion in him. He was clearly upset. And, and bereaved at, at this loss. And whereas in the past, perhaps monarchs were a, a bit more emotionally restrained, um, Charles has allowed us to see some of his emotions and to share that emotion with him because, yeah. you know, he's acknowledging that all of us are, are feeling shocked and, and a, a bit at a loss for this. So, there's a, a little change that's coming and i don't think that's going to be a bad thing it yeah. may not be permanent perhaps william will prefer a more stiff upper lip when when he becomes king you, you know we don't know but yeah. at the moment i think he struck the tone very very well for the 21st century um and you know many of the passions that he's had um are very 21st century, you know, his environmentalism and conservation, his concern about cultural preservation and, and, uh, you know, helping youth find, find their way in the world. Those are issues that he has been involved with for 50 or 60 years, long before the rest of the world picked up on that. I mean, they used yeah. to make fun of him for his environmentalism. <laughs> so I, I think he's, he's going to be the right person for the times. And, um, and then I guess the last point would be the accession ceremony in the UK was televised for the first time in a thousand years. Yeah, wow. Um, and, you know, the Queen had her coronation televised, and that was a big leap forward into the 20th century. You know, it, it had been in many ways kind of a Victorian institution until she came in and refreshed it. And I think he's going to, to pull the monarchy into the 21st century. Wow. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm not, I know that most people will have seen this, but, and I don't mean to be a bit mushy because I do get annoyed by the font, but this picture with Paddington Bear that most people have seen, and obviously this is not the font that goes with this picture, but I think the actual, whoever's written this has actually mm -hmm. summarized a nice feeling. I've done my duties, Paddington, please take me to my, please take me to my husband. Um, yeah. 
is a is a lovely sentiment. I do notice today though in the news, um, I think Buckingham Palace is telling people to stop putting Paddington bears outside the place because there's too many of them. Do you I have, think specifically they were saying please don't bring Paddington bears with marmalade sandwiches. Right. <laughs> Fair they were having a lot of food spoiling on <laughs> on the front of the yeah. Um, just lastly, any one particular moment for you of this very short time, it's only the weekend, that stands out for you since you found out? Well, I mean, the the moment that I had sort of confirmed in my own mind that she had indeed passed, and that was at about 6 a.m. on, on Friday morning, um, my immediate thoughts were not suitable for broadcast. Um, <laughs> I was struck by the, the enormity of this. And I think that will stay with me for the rest of my life. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think I think the most iconic images are yet to come. You know, Charles's speech was excellent, and and um, that reassured me a lot that I think he's going to do a great job. There's a there's a photo at the moment of the um, the flag draped coffin uh, being taken into uh, the palace in Scotland. And Princess Anne is there, and she curtsies very, very deeply. Um, and it's, it's, I think, quite poignant. But I, I know there are going to be many photos that, that we're going to see um, in the coming days that are, are going to become, well, deeply part of our culture. You know, we'll all be able to say, did you see this photo? And everyone will say, well, yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah, look, hey, look, thank you for joining us. I uh, really appreciate you giving us some time today. If people want to find out more about Monarchy New Zealand, it's monarchy.org.nz. You're not heading across yourself? Oh, no, no. Um, I um, I have uh, a, uh, a young son at the moment, and uh, I think my wife would not be at all impressed <laughs> if I was to leave uh, uh, her with him. And um, actually, we have a daughter due in another week or two. So, uh, well, yeah. Is it is it is it Elizabeth? Is that like a done deal for the daughter? I mean, just between me and you? Just between me and you and, and everybody listening. Yeah. Uh, no, no names have been settled on yet. Okay, good. Uh, we'll have to see. But I must admit, there would be something quite poetic about that. Dr. Sean Palmer from Monarchy New Zealand. Thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate you giving us a few moments. Thank you.